can feel it in the room. You know, this place always comes alive. I think the very first uh, poetry uh, rock band that we had here, I know it, in this joint, three years ago, Janet Hamill and Moving Star. Look, this audience knows their cues. They can't believe this shit. You know? Since that time, we've had a couple of albums come out. As a matter of fact, album number two is out here right now. Everybody's got a copy of uh, The Genius of the Alphabet. Oh, The Genie of the Alphabet, sorry. As a matter of fact, it's both of them. She is a genius of the alphabet. She manages to put together words that we have never heard before and make them feel like uh, they've been your lover for years. Um, this is one of the strangest collaborations that rock and roll has ever seen. A, a, uh, a surrealist uh, poet in the, uh, in, the, in the old tradition. This is a moment where I say the last time Jan was on this stage was a reading for Philip Lamantia who is the leading uh, surrealist in the, uh, in the country. And his books you can find back in the bookstore. Somebody definitely worth he's searching now out. Heaven. Now he's in Surrealist Heaven. And we've got the leading surrealist in the country with us right now, Janet Hamill, with her band Moving Star. Tonight we're going to have the, uh, this is a party, in case you didn't feel it already. It's time to uh, let the genie out of the bottle and get busy. Let's do it. Janet Hamill, Moving Star. Genie. And we're going to start with the, this piece starts off the CD and it starts off tonight's set. This is Door to Door. Sir. 
circling the sarcophagus filled with sand from the valley of the kings. On a bed rimmed with flowers and the yellow pollen that glistens on my skin in the dark, I lay me down on cool white sheets on a pillow with a key of gold. to the, the visual behind us. This is a, a DVD compiled by Brian Michael Hamill. Yay! Who's here, right over here filming. And uh, most of the pictures are, are by Tony Hoffman. And Tony's here as well. So thank you very much. Uh, this next poem is a tribute to the Jersey Shore. <laughs> to the ocean, to the ocean, to the more natural uh, elements of the Jersey Shore. Um, my sister and I would disagree on this. She would say that the, the boardwalk in Point Pleasant and Seaside Heights are the natural aspects of the shore and the ocean is merely a decorative backdrop. <laughs> but I would disagree. <laughs> I like the ocean. This is body of water. body of water, moving or standing still. In the dark green depths, my soul finds its own level. 
lost in a mirror of infinite margins, ever sounding on and on. Perpetual arms pull me under light silver sheets, tossed with wind and waves, where a coiled muscle gives up the perfect word. I come with only a fever to offer, far from the dry carnations in summer's throat and certain birds that pierce the air with an agonizing cry. I come to wash and be clean in my immensity. spray of distant sky in sympathetic response the surface repeats the hypnotic pattern of my longing again and again swimming out to the pages breaking before me with only a parched fountain to offer, far from the sun's entrenched lullaby of insect music and the worried sleep that parts with a film of sweat and dust. Standing by a body of water, moving or standing still. In the dark green depths, my soul finds its own level. Hall recital fame. Yeah. <laughs> Made him drag his uh, accordion out of the uh, attic a couple of years ago. <laughs> okay. This one is a tribute to Edgar Allan Poe, one of my favorite American writers. And it's called L'Amour Extraordinaire. And not because I was trying to be fancy, really. <laughs> but um, the French, the French have such a great tradition of writing poems at the tomb of, you know, Baudelaire, the tomb of Paul, the po tomb of Verlaine, and I was thinking of that when I wrote this. And also, Baudelaire was was the first uh, poet to really recognize Poe's genius, and it, it came back again to the side of the Atlantic quite a, quite a, time, a while later. So. Anyway, these, that's what was going in my mind when I, I wrote this one. Peace. 
Nice Bob has a portrait of Poe in his, his poet's gallery. Um, when you go to the bathroom, you'll have to go down. To the poet's gallery. Old Edgar's there. Pictures are so neat. I wish there was another screen in front of me. Ah, this next poem was uh, it's called The Green Harmonica. There used to be a little shop in, in uh, Sugarloaf, I think it was, that sold green harmonicas. Only green harmonicas. And it was a really great shop. We'd just walk in off the street and check out all the harmonicas, you know, and play one and see what you want, really liked and wanted to buy and all different kinds, all different keys and chromatic harmonicas and big and little ones like, what is the harmonic hats on Ed Sullivan? <laughs> big ones, little ones. But you know, the rents went up like they're going up all over the place and now I think it's strictly mail order. But you can still, you can still get the green harmonicas. So this is, this is the green harmonica. <laughs> I bought one of them. The mouth begins a movement along the orbits of celestial bodies. Along the roof of the house of angels. Along the line of least. 
Even if you've never played harmonica, you pick it up and you'll have no problem. All righty. Okay. Now, um, Blue Boy.
shaped by the charity of the firmament blue boy. Gold scales begin to rise at the edge of the water, on the edge of the dream line. Prevailing winds favor a crossing. Go on ahead. The deepest chamber of the night will restore your exhausted wings. Go on ahead. Torcello on bass, Greg Feller on drums, Jay Rubio on guitar, and Evan Tiedem on keyboards. Uh, at this point, we'd like to uh, invite two of our guest musicians to perform on the CD, and we're happy to have them here tonight. Judith Tullock and Stephen uh, Francino. <laughs> We're just so lucky that um, these people are neighbors. But then that's not surprising given that Orange County is the cultural center of the universe. So everybody just gravitates, so you know. They all, they all just come there eventually. <laughs> but uh, this poem, um, a few years ago, I submerged myself in uh, Vic uh, Victoria, <laughs> Brazilian poetry, and um, my favorite Brazilian poet is Ven Vinicius de Moraes, and he, yeah, right, he wrote lyrics to uh, Jobim's Bossa Nova songs, at least a lot of them. He didn't do Girl from Ipanema, I don't think, but he did a lot of them. So when it came time to put music to this one, I, you know, I really wanted a bossa nova beat, and Judith knows bossa nova chords, <laughs> and so does Steve. So anyway, we're really glad to have them. This is my macumba, which is kind of the uh, blend of Catholicism and voodoo that, that they they practice in uh, in Brazil, in Orange County, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Excellent. Right. We all belong to the, the Macumba Church in uh, Goshen. <laughs>
existing. Go and bathe in the essence of white medicinal roses. like to read uh, the only pure spoken word piece on on the CD okay I think I can do it a memory uh, this is a poem called K-E-R-O-U-A-C and um, when I, in the late 60s and early 70s, I went through my beat phase, you know, I was totally obsessed with the beats. I had to have all the books on the beats and all the picture books, scenes along the road, the whole thing. And first it was Ginsburg and then it was Burroughs, you know, Yage letters, the whole thing. <clears throat> and then in 1974, I just completely got into this Kerouac phase. And a couple of years ago, we were invited to perform up in Lowell, Massachusetts, which is his hometown, that's where he's buried. And uh, every year they have a festival for him. And <clears throat> so I wrote this poem uh, for that occasion. But uh, it's about a period in, in the 1970s. It's called Kerouac. <clears throat> okay, here we go. I had nothing, but I had a gray t-shirt. <laughs> and I ironed on black velvet letters. K-E-R-O-U-A-C. 
I had nothing. I had four walls on St. Mark's Place, a bottle of Calvados, and the indifference of the universe. I had nothing, but I had you. From sea to shining sea, Atlantic, Pacific, Arctic, Antarctic, the Indian Ocean, and the eighth, Mar Incognito. Over, under, inside and out, beyond everything, I had you. I had your words, lines and paragraphs rolling down mountainsides from high above the timberline to Desolation Peak and 242 choruses of blues for the Buddha and Fellaheen of Mexico City and every other place. I had your footprints in the sand in Tangiers, your palm print on the wheel of impermanence, your dreams of long childhood walks under the old trees of New England, your athlete's body, your flannel shirts, your handsome face on a fire escape on East 7th Street just before the invocation of Duluth, inhaling one last lucky strike for the pent up, aching, restless, road, farewell, subterraneans, and water towers of Manhattan. It was time for all that coming back to America. The Lincoln Tunnel, oil tanks and anemic skies in New Jersey, Route 80 over the Delaware, the road unraveling, the road sufficient unto itself, a 20th century pilgrim's way, a home for the Tathagata passing through the railroad earth, the gas station night, the bebop radio whale of Charlie Parker's saxophone clear across Kansas to San Francisco, the little alley off Market Street, Tokay in a paper bag at the foot of Bixby Canyon, Big Sur's ocean roar of vowel sounds from the far side of eternity, the waves laying better than a thousand transcendental diamonds of compassion at your feet. Even to the end, I had you, to the mayonnaise of fame, tearing you to pieces in the glow of the television set in Florida, to what's buried in Lowell's Edson Cemetery. Tijan, nothing's buried there. The dust of your sacred, bleeding, Catholic heart with that of the Holy Ghost and certain mad and driven saints has been placed among the stars. I had nothing. But I had a gray t-shirt, and I ironed on black velvet letters, K-E-R-O-U-A-C. I wish I still had that t-shirt. <laughs> All righty, moving right along. Um, I want to finish up the set so we can, we can actually party a little here before it's, we have to clear the room. Um, this next poem is A Thousand Years, and we have the good fortune on the CD to have uh, David Amram perform on that one. And... and <laughs> He's one, of, he's one of the greats, he's a beat legend himself, and we met him through the Kerouac festivals. But he's, he is one of the busy, busiest men in, uh, in the art world, and he couldn't be here tonight. But we are more than blessed with Stephen, who can <laughs> more than fill in. So this is uh, a thousand years.
your night? How goes the watch as midnight approaches in the storm waves of the sky? The moon beats a gnarled fist on an old yellow drum. Away. A thousand years are yet to come. How goes the night? How goes the watch? of the sea. A thousand years fill the hole with dust and desire. A thousand years of wasted wings to set free Moving forward. 
This is spellbound. <laughs>
massive of flame, extinguished my capacity to want anything. In this transport, the temperature is dropping in a ray of moonlight. On your bed, I pass away, annihilated from head to foot. In the fortress, of your aloneness Stephen's got the soul of a bird trapped in his flute. <laughs> so great. <sighs> All righty. We have a very special guest at this juncture. Um, our first record was produced by Lenny Kay. And this time around, we had to go on our own. But Lenny, Lenny plays on one of the tracks, and we're just so happy that he has, that he did, and that he's here tonight to play. Mr. Lenny Kay, are you here? I think he has other more important business back there. <laughs> Lenny doesn't really require an introduction, but I'll give him one anyway. <laughs> he is a rock historian, he is a great musician, and he is the author of the current, some call it Madness. <laughs> totally brilliant. Lenny's version of an autobiography. 
of Russ Colombo, one of the great crooners. And it's going to be coming out in paperback soon. A must, a must read. Just, just to read Lenny's prose style. If the subject could be anything, but his prose style is so amazing. Okay, this is for all those amateur astronomers out there, which I consider myself partially one. I'm hoping I'm going to get to see the stars maybe in November in New Mexico, so. Star party!
any better than that, except maybe the Pleiades. There goes my crown. <laughs> well, we're going to take advantage of having Lenny here. And we'd like to play, uh, like I say, Lenny produced Fly Nowhere, but he, he did have one, one uh, musical uh, appearance on that uh, CD. And he plays his Egyptian oud. It was unbelievable because I was saying to Lenny, you know, I really... Egyptian oud would really sound great on this, and he said, I have an Egyptian oud. <laughs> Such a beautiful instrument. From this instrument, the, the guitar evolved. glowing in the wake of the ship. Tomorrow, in Casablanca, I'll set my feet down on a brand new continent of shop windows filled with silver jewelry shining like fresh minted currency.
don't forget me. Hoping she'll navigate the solitude that lies between us. Well, if Lenny isn't enough, he's never enough. <laughs> we are doubly blessed. The, the last poem was written for my oldest friend. And my oldest friend is Patti Smith. <laughs> Patty's going to perform tomorrow night across the street at CBGB's, but I understand it's been sold out for, you know, weeks and weeks, but we appreciate her coming by tonight. We're still suffering from a sore throat from Rome. <laughs> but she, she was actually in St. Peter's Square when the new Pope addressed the multitudes for the first time. Unbelievable. Lady's got luck following her all over the place. Okay. This is the Lost Ceilings and the title. The title. Uh, the title of uh, of, of the uh, CD comes from this. So I think with Patty, Patty, self. I don't think we're gonna have much trouble invoking the genie. Floor. How the sharp silver slivers reflect the truest likeness of the soul. Splintered, insignificant pieces on the edge of this world. A little haunted tonight. The four white walls of the hermitage surround. A polar diorama. A landscape of ice. Interrupted by a pocket 
pocket of desk lamp light. In the hands of an anchorite, a lantern. Fra Angelico's Annunciation. The horse nebula composed of gas and dust. The pyramids of Giza. Picture postcards circumscribed by amber glow. Picture postcards left behind at the entrance to an uncharted network of inland seas. Mexican shawl, muffling its sound. Such solitude as afflicts the room. Tilted on an angle, unassailed on the cusp of darkness. The bookshelves in the tall, thin clouds are a heavenly trove of torches. Burning pages, paths and spirals, labyrinths lighting the way to a desert birthplace.
CD and and Bobby does such a beautiful job. <laughs> this is our, our poet's duet, and Patty's gonna join us too. <laughs> this is our poem for 9-11. We've got Stephen with us on this one too. The whole Mishpuka. That's a, new, that's a new Yiddish word for me. I never heard that before. Well, the great thing about Yiddish words is that you never have a problem with what they mean. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the sound. It's yeah, the sound, it's yeah. Sound. All right. This is in English, though, not Yiddish. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. You, words. you can ad lib. You just ad lib it. You can do it, Doc. Okay. This is a serious song. We have to get serious.
the fall of the towers and the fall of the towers a common prayer so many a scribble prayer on scraps of paper scribble down in the alleyways the Tonight, beneath the bridges, the rivers flow as sorrow into the sea. Tonight, beneath the bridges, the rivers flow of all that's passing as sorrow, as sorrow, innocence. Skyline Dust of glass and steel remains all that remains all that the remains. candles burn the candles burn. Thank you. Thank you for really Moving making star. it a part. Many special guests. Nice hit. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Would you guys love an encore? About it, I think we should have something from Janet Hamill, a moving star. Get her back up here. This is the All-Star Poets Jam in which I will be totally drowned out, I'm sure. Okay. This is dedicated to the spirit of Charles Baudelaire, the greatest poet in my estimation, who ever lived. It's called Sacrifice.
giving you a standing ovation. Oh my God. Oh, that guy too. Oh. Great work, Ben. Great work, old poet Janet Hamilton. Don't forget, guys, we're all here for a party for Genie of the Alphabet. There's a few uh, CDs to pick up here. The band is happy to sign them for you. Janet's going to come back there and groove with you for a while, hang out. We have time before the next show because you have organized things so well, Janet. The poets are such great organizers. <laughs> So uh, come up, buy a CD, get a drink, enjoy yourselves, talk to Janet. And here are the CDs right here at this table. There we go. DJ Stefan is going to bring us in. Stefan is going to bring us in.